So we will uh, move on to the numericals now. This is the first problem on the cotter joint. Design a socket and spigot type cotter joint. It is a socket and spigot type cotter joint to connect two round rods subjected to a steady load of 120 kilo Newton. The material used for the joint is C40 having yield stress of 324 MPa. Take FOS as 4 for tension, 6 for shear and 3 for the crushing based on the yield stress. So this is the problem given. So if you just uh, analyze the problem, you need to design a quarter joint. So we know that the quarter joint is used to support uh, two rods which are in tension. Okay. So here we need to design a quarter joint for two rods which are subjected to tensile load. So which will be something like this. There are two rods. There is one rod and this is the second one. So there will be a component here and there will be a component here. You can uh, take this as the in uh, this as the output of uh, one particular part and this is the input of one particular part and if you want to connect these two rods. Okay. So these two rods are in tension like this of 120 kilo Newton, 120 kilo Newton. These two rods are in tension of 120 kilo Newton. So I need to connect these two rods with the help of a quarter joint. So I need to build a quarter joint. Now in between it will be a quarter joint. You need to design a quarter joint to connect two rods at the ends. Okay, to sustain a load of 120 kilo Newton. So there will be so many parts of the quarter joint that is what you need to design to sustain this amount of load 120 kilo Newton. For that we have the procedure to solve for the quarter joint. The first and foremost thing is to determine the diameter of this rod and this one D. We need to determine the diameter of the rod first to be joined. So the first step will be calculation of the rod diameter that is P is equal to area into stress pi d square by 4 is the area into stress in tension okay tensile stress. So substitute for tensile stress load load is known 120 stress is known that is 81 yes before substituting the stress you need to know the property sorry you need to know the data here C40 material is given C40 material again no need to go with the data handbook because the magnitude is given yield stress magnitude is given if this information is not given then you should open your data handbook search for C40 steel the property of C40 steel from there you need to get the yield stress but in this problem yield stress is directly given therefore no need to open the data handbook for search of yield stress it is given take FOS as 4 for tension so 4 for tension means if it is sigma t the working stress or the design stress that is equal to yield stress by factor of safety so none of the design will be based on the factor of safety uh, it will be based on the yield stress directly. We will not consider the yield stress as the capacity of the material to design. We will going to consider a stress much lower than the yield stress. We will going to keep certain amount of stress for the accidental loads. That is what it is called as factor of safety. Look at here. If you divide any number by a number which is greater than 1, you will get a number which is lesser than the numerator. So that is what done here, 324 is the yield stress or the capacity of the material. It will be divided by 4 here because we are going to consider yield stress in tension as 4. You will end up with 81 MPa. So we are going to consider the proper, we are going to consider the capacity of the material as 81 to calculate the diameter, to calculate the diameter. Okay. To calculate the diameter, we are going to consider 81 as the capacity. That means to say, we are going to get more 
diameter, the larger or the greater diameter, that will be in the safer side. Okay. So, get sigma t by dividing uh, yield stress with the factor of safety, corresponding factor of safety. Similarly, sigma c, yield stress by factor of safety in crushing. Similarly, shear stress, yield stress by factor of safety in shear. Okay. Then, calculate uh, the diameter. Calculate the diameter of the rods to be joined with the quarter joint. So, P is equal to pi d square by 4 into sigma t. Substitute for sigma t as 81. P as 120. You will get D is equal to 43.43. So, you cannot have the fraction. So, you need to round off to the next higher value. Always, if it is the diameter, round off for the next higher value. Okay, 44 mm is the round off value. Then, in the step 2, in the step 2, calculate D1 into T, the other dimensions of quarter joint. D1 into T, you will get it as so and so. Then, in the step 2B, calculate separately D1 and T. D1 and T. Similarly, in the step 3, is considering the double shear of the quarter tau, substitute as 54, P, 120, B and T. You need to calculate B, T, you have calculated here. Substitute here for T, B, you need to calculate like this. So, before uh, calculating, look at here the conversion 1 MPA is equal to 1 Newton per mm square. To convert MPA, MPA means mega Pascal, mega is 10 power 6, Pascal, 1 Pascal is 1 Newton per meter square. Per meter square is there. To convert meter square to millimeter square, you need to multiply it 10 power 6. And this is in the denominator. If you take it to the numerator, 10 power minus 6. Mega 10 power 6, 10 power minus 6 to convert meter square to millimeter square. Those two will going to cancel. Therefore, 1 mega Pascal directly convert to 1 Newton per millimeter square. Therefore, if it is uh, 108 mega Pascal, it will be 108 Newton per mm square. 81 mega Pascal, 81 Newton per mm square, like that. So, it is just the substitution while uh, Discussing about the procedure, I have given you the page number and the equation number of the equations. These are all the equation which is taken from the data handbook, Balbir Reddy and Mahadevan data handbook. So, if you go to the particular day, uh, page and the, the equation number, you will find all the equations. Just you need to select the equation, substitute accordingly, get the dimensions. That's it. Step 4, calculate D2 and T1. Step 5, calculation of capital D1 and capital D. What is this capital D? What is this T1? What is this D2? Just go through the figure given in the data handbook. Okay, yesterday I have shown you, in the previous session I have shown you the figure of quarter joint which is given in the data handbook. You need to open your data handbook. You need to correlate with the dimensions given in the figure. Okay, what is D2? Look at the figure given in the data handbook. What is T1? Look at the figure given in the data handbook. What is capital D1? Look at the figure given in the data handbook. Similarly, L1, calculation of L1. It is just direct substitution. Okay, direct substitution and calculation. You need to follow the procedure. You need to substitute accordingly. Calculate the dimension. After calculation of the dimension, you need to roughly write the quarter joint figure. Okay, you need to roughly draw the figure which is available in the data handbook. Then you need to mark the dimensions there. That is what you need to do at the end. Okay, maybe if you do not write the sketch, maybe you may lose one or two marks. Maybe, may not be. Okay, so this is the second problem. Design a quarter joint to connect two round rods of diameter 30 mm. The following stresses may be used. Tensile stress 90 MPa, shear stress 60 MPa and the crushing stress as 150 MPa. Okay. So, the difference between the previous problem and this problem is in the previous problem, the load and the stresses was given. 
in this problem diameter and the stresses is given look at here the data diameter 30 mm diameter of the rod 30 mm is given and the stresses are given and in the previous problem yield stress was given then the factor of safety was given so whenever yield stress and the factor of safety is given you need to calculate the design stress or the allowable stress working stress so working stress design stress will be equal to yield stress by the factor of safety okay you should not design any material considering the yield stress you need to consider some of the uh, factor of safety and you need to get the working stress and for that working stress you need to calculate the dimensions okay but in this problem directly the tensile stress is given shear stress is given and the compressive stress is given okay yield stress is not given instead directly here the working stress is given if and only if the yield stress is given you need to convert okay so here you need to consider this as working stress because there is no yield stress and factor of safety so working stress is uh, 90 150 and 60 in tension compression and uh, shear respectively so the difference here is you need to calculate the load now okay in the previous problem this was the previous problem there are two rods which are in tension by 120 kilo newton and 120 kilo newton this is what the problem given in the previous one the first problem earlier one 120 kilo newton okay so in the first step you have calculated the diameter in the first step you have calculated the diameter for the problem number one so this is problem number one that is the previous problem the difference here is in this problem again there are two rods okay there are two rods the diameter is given here as 30 mm the diameter is given as 30 mm the load is not given p the load is not given okay to design or to calculate the dimensions of a quarter joint you need diameter of the rod to be joined as well as the load of the rod which is subjected this you need to know those these two information you should know p as well as d so in the step one instead of calculating for the diameter in the step one you will be calculating for the load considering d and sigma t you will be calculating the load so load if you substitute and calculate you will get it around 63.61 into 10 power 3 newton this is what the load you will get so the rest of the procedure will be exactly same as the problem number one so just take down the formulas from the data and copy the equations from the data handbook substitute accordingly calculate all other dimensions of the quarter joint that is what you need to do so i have stopped at this stage i'll uh, leave it to you you just solve the problem the remaining procedure of the problem thank you so the next uh, topic is uh, threaded fastener or it can also be called as threaded joints so this is uh, a temporary joint you can dismantle it and assemble it whenever required so a threaded fastener is uh, defined as it is a separable joint separable joint you can separate it at any time okay separable joint of two or more machine parts that are held together by means of a threaded fastening such as bolt and a nut okay there will be threads in the shank there will be threads because of the threads internal and external thread of bolt as well as the nut there will be clamping so it will hold mechanically the parts of the machine so it will use to hold the parts mechanically okay so the parts of the threaded fastening are bolt or it can also be called as a screw nut and the washer okay so these three are the parts essential parts of the threaded fastening the common type of the threads are through bolts screw 
and the stud. Okay, these are all the common types of the fastening. So now, what is the difference between these three? Okay, here also I have written bolt or the screw. What is the difference? So if you use as a set, like the bolt and the nut, if you use a bolt as well as the nut, okay, as a set, then it is called as through bolts. Then it is called as through bolts, where you will be not having a groove in the head of the shank, head of the bolt. Okay, the head of the bolt will be usually hexagonal in shape or square in shape. Okay, you want to use a nut to tighten. You will uh, see the application of these type while assembling a cot. In your home, you can uh, have a look at the cot. In the cot, there will be a bolt of uh, al almost around uh, uh, 10, uh, cent uh, 10 centimeters in uh, length, almost around 10 centimeters in length and that will be uh, accompanied with the nut and you are going to tighten the nut. You are going to rotate the nut to tighten the joint. Okay, so that is what the first one, through bolt. In the through bolt case, you are going to use both nut as well as the bolt, bolt, bolt both bolt and the nut to tighten it. Okay, the second one is a screw. Screw means in the type of screw, you are not going to use the nut. You are not going to use the nut. Okay, instead, you are going to use only the bolt part, only the bolt part that will be having threads. It is called a screw where you can find the groove in the head of the screw. You can find the groove in the head of the screw. It will be fitted, the screw will be fitted anywhere. It can be fitted to the wall, it can be fitted to a wooden uh, block like that. But to fit a screw, there must be a tapped hole. There must be a tapped hole, you need to make a hole. Then you are going to fix the screw and you are going to tighten it. Okay, that is what the type of screw. So the difference between the first one, through bolt and the screw is, in the case of uh, through bolt, you will be using spanner to join, spanner to clamp. Okay. In the case of a screw, you are going to use screwdriver. You are going to use screwdriver. You should uh, imagine tightening the bolt as well as uh, screw using a spanner as well as the screwdriver. So the spanner will be in the length, it will be larger compared to the diameter of the bolt. Therefore, you will get some mechanical advantage while tightening. Okay, you will get uh, the moment while tightening. That will be the mechanical advantage as well as in the type of, in the case of a screw, you will be rotating as well as pushing. Okay, both combined loading you are going to apply to tighten. You are going to push and you are going to rotate. That is what the case of screw. Okay, then a washer is there when you are going to use the washer and what is the advantage of washer. So the advantage of washer is if you uh, put the washer then the load will be distributed among the area. Larger amount of area will be exported to the load. Therefore, if the load is distributed to larger amount of area, stress obviously comes down because stress is inversely proportional to the area. If the area increases, stress decreases. If you put the washer, that amount of uh, area of the washer will be taking the distributing the load, thereby reducing the stress. That is one of the advantage of the washer. Then the second one is it will avoid the damage for the head as well as the shank or the nut parts of the fastening. That is what the ad advantage of the washer. Then the third one is stud. In the case of stud, you will be having threads both the side of the bolt. In the case of first two, in the case of first two bolt as well as a screw, you will be having screw throughout or you will be having uh, threads throughout or you will be having the threads at some part, at one part. But in the case of thread, stud, you will be having the thread 
on either side on either side so one side will be fitted to some block another side will uh, another side you will be tightening with the nut that is what the stud so you can see the images of these in the data handbook page number 126 so if you just open your data handbook and go to page number 126 you will find all the figures here okay the figure corresponding to the threaded fastening figure corresponding to the stud look at this is the stud where the threads are at both the ends the stud then the figure corresponding to the bolt washer and the nut this is the bolt this is the washer there is a washer and the nut and here the threads are for some amount of distance okay there is a shank then the threads are uh, made here there is a head then washer and the nut so look at the difference between these two the bolt washer and the nut and the stud in the stud there will be uh, threads at both the side okay as well as in the screw in the screw maybe the threads will be on entire length of the bolt or for the certain amount of span so this is the classification of uh, the threaded fasteners and the standards in the next uh, session we will be dealing with the standards of the fastener that is uh, m20 or m20 into 9 like that so usually the threaded fastener is denoted by iso metric uh, standard where it will be denoted by the diameter as well as the pitch so in the next uh, session we will take up uh, the problem on uh, the we will take up the problem on the threaded fastness